Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of December. Indian death row prisoner Kulbushan Chadav's wife and mother meet him in Islamabad. Islamic State claims blast at Afghan intelligence agency in Kabul. And Christians in India and Pakistan usher in Christmas festivities. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a new route in Delhi Metro called the Magenta Line on Monday. Prime Minister Modi expressed hope that people will take pride in giving up private cars and travel in metro systems, benefiting environment and the country in the process. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday inaugurated a new route in Delhi Metro called the Magenta Line. The nearly eight-mile-long section of the metro will connect Botanical Garden area of Uttar Pradesh province to Kalkaji Mandir in South Delhi. The Prime Minister himself travelled in the newly inaugurated metro line with Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh province, Yogi Adityanath. The new metro line is likely to improve the travel time, providing relief to thousands of daily commuters. Mass transportation, rapid transportation, multimodal transportation. ये समय की मांग है. आज शायद धन खर्च करने में दिक्कत आती है. प्राथमिकताओं को थोड़ा बदलना पड़ता है. लेकिन इसके कारण आने वाले समय में इसका बहुत लाभ होने वाला है इस पे खतरा प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सेड द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द रेलवे एंड रोड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वाज हैपनिंग एट अ हिस्टोरिक पेस अंडर द गवर्नमेंट एट द सेंटर द न्यू ट्रेन सर्विस विल रन अनमैन्ड हाउएवर फॉर द फर्स्ट टू टू थ्री इयर्स द ट्रेन्स विल बी ऑपरेटेड बाय ड्राइवर्स in news from Pakistan, death row prisoner in Pakistan, International Kulbushan Jadav's mother and wife met him on Monday in Islamabad. The meeting was allowed by Pakistan government on humanitarian grounds. The mother and wife of Indian National Kulbushan Jadav, who is on death row in Pakistan, arrived in Islamabad on Monday to meet him. They were accompanied by Indian Deputy High Commissioner in Islamabad, J.P. Singh. Pakistan, which has denied India consular access to Jadav, allowed him to meet his wife and mother on humanitarian grounds. The meeting, which started at around 1.45 p.m., lasted for about 30 minutes. Jadav was tried before a Pakistani military court and sentenced to death in April on charges of espionage. The International Court of Justice, or ICJ, ordered Pakistan to delay Jadav's execution in May on India's appeal, pending the final verdict by it. This is a very important day for Pakistan, being the birth anniversary of the father of the nation, Kaidayazo Muhammad Ali Jinnah. It was in this light that this day was chosen for the humanitarian meeting of Commander Yadav with his wife and mother. The meeting came through weeks before ICJ is to hear India's plea against the death sentence on grounds that the Indian national never got an opportunity to defend himself before he was sentenced. India has repeatedly rejected Pakistan's account of Jada's activities and maintains that he had been kidnapped in Iran. Moving on, pro-freedom Baloch activists across the globe have intensified their peaceful protest against Pakistan in recent months. The World Baloch organization has now added mobile billboard advertisements in their campaign in New York City to highlight the gross human rights violations inflicted upon the Baloch people by Pakistani forces. The World Baluchistan Organization, or WBO, on Sunday added mobile advertising to its ongoing Free Baluchistan campaign in New York. Mobile billboards carrying slogans such as Free Baluchistan from Human Rights Abuses and Raise Your Voice Against Human Rights Abuses in Baluchistan by Pakistan Army are circling around prominent locations across the city. 
The advertisements also include slogans against the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project which passes through southwestern Baluchistan province. The campaign aims to raise awareness among Americans about the ethnic persecution and gross human rights violations in Baluchistan by Pakistani forces. It will run for a month during which the WBO will continue to apply different methods of campaigning to highlight the dire situation in Balochistan. In news from Afghanistan, at least six people were killed in a suicide attack near the building of Afghanistan's National Intelligence Agency in Kabul city on Monday. Militant group Islamic State claimed a responsibility for the attack. A suicide bomber blew himself up close to a compound of Afghanistan's National Intelligence Agency in Kabul on Monday, killing at least six persons. The victims reportedly included four civilians and two members of Afghan spy agency, the National Directorate of Security or NDS. An official said the explosion occurred close to the agency's entrance. Militant group Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. The blast comes a week after the Islamic State claimed an attack on a training facility of NDS in Kabul that ended when the attackers were killed before causing significant casualties. More on news from Afghanistan. U.S. Marines are set to return to Afghanistan's Helmand province after three years, Helmand's provincial governor said on Sunday. A delegation of the U.S. Navy recently visited the province to assess the situation and assured commitment to bring peace and stability in the region. The governor of Afghanistan's Helmand province on Sunday said a delegation of the U.S. Navy visited the province on Saturday to assess the situation ahead of a U.S. Marine deployment. He said the U.S. officials led by U.S. Secretary of the Navy promised that U.S. Marines will soon return to the province. The U.S. delegation also assured of long-term commitment to bring peace and stability in Afghanistan. Terrorism په مقابل په ګډه مبارزه باندې پاکشاري وشوله همدارنګه د افغاني قوتونو په تجهیز او تربیه او د مشاوریت په رول باندې خبره وشوله دوجمنه وکړله چې د دو د مشاوریت او تربیه پروګرام به حتی د کنډکټر لیول پورې وغزول شي یو اس مارینز وو پریویسلی بیسد ان کندهار اند هلمند بیټوین 2010 اند 2014 ات ا ټایم دی نمبرډ اباوت 30000 U.S. President Donald Trump has voted to win against insurgency in Afghanistan by committing more U.S. troops. Presently, there are about 11,000 U.S. troops in Afghanistan involved in training and assisting Afghan security forces and institutions in their fight against the Taliban and other insurgent groups. And moving on to news from Nepal, leaders of Nepal's Federal Socialist Forum Nepal on Sunday urged the Nepalese president to endorse the National Assembly election ordinance. Nepal's government had sent the ordinance to the president for endorsement almost two months ago, but it has not been endorsed yet. Top leaders of Nepal's Federal Socialist Forum Nepal, or FSFN, Upendra Yadav and Rajendra Shrest on Sunday met President Vidya Devi Bhandari and urged her to endorse the National Assembly election ordinance. During the meeting, the two leaders told the President she had no power to withhold the ordinance as it was sent by the government. They said if the issue is not resolved soon, National Assembly election would not be held and a new government would not be formed then. Parties in Nepal are divided over the system to be followed for the election. The government at present has proposed single transferable voting system in the ordinance. President Bhandari told the leaders the issue should be resolved in line with the spirit of the constitution, law and democratic norms only. A hot air balloon festival in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province kicked off with much fanfare on Sunday. The 10-day long festival aims to explore the scope of adventure tourism in the province. A hot air balloon festival kicked off on the bank of River Ganges in Varanasi city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh province with much fanfare on Sunday. 
initiated by the tourism department, the 10-day long festival aims to explore the scope of adventure tourism in the city. Locals too welcome the move and are enjoying the first of its kind festival in Varanasi. हमारे पास रिवर है, हमारे पास बड़े अच्छे वाटर बॉडीज और लैंडस्केप्स हैं, लेकिन जो एडवेंचर टूरिज्म है, इसका काफी स्कोप है और इसी दिशा में ये एक कदम उठाया गया, हॉट एयर बलूनिंग का फिलहाल दस दिन के लिए किया जा रहा है। as a मतलब pilot project कह सकते हैं। First time हमारे बनारस में आया हुआ है इसलिए बहुत बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है सारे बच्चे और बड़े सब लोग enjoy करेंगे क्योंकि पहला है इसलिए सबके लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है। Varanasi attracts a large number of tourists to its temples, traditionally embroidered silk sarees and a quintessential oriental charm. And to take benefits of the crowds coming in, the authorities have initiated the festival to create more buzz through the flying balloons, pulling tourists and locals to the river bank. Christians across India and Pakistan celebrated Christmas with fervor and gaiety on Monday. The celebrations began after midnight mass in churches marking the birth of Jesus Christ. Christians across India thronged churches with festive spirit and ushered in Christmas festivities on Monday. Devotees in India's southern Bengaluru city sang carols in churches that were decked up for the midnight mass for Christmas. Christmas, which is celebrated across the world on December 25, marks the commemoration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Devotees believe that the festival brings them the opportunity to grow spiritually towards Jesus Christ. Christmas is all about uh, sharing and giving. As a youth, um, we celebrate ourselves physically and mentally. Physically, our preparation is visible, that is, as you see, we decorate our house and cribs and Christmas tree stars, you know, all of us. And uh, mentally is that we prepare us spiritually accepting Jesus within our hearts. Similar scenes were seen in eastern Kolkata city, where devotees thronged churches to attend the mass. They offered prayers and remembered the teachings of Jesus Christ. While celebrations in India continued on a large scale, Christians in neighboring Pakistan also attended special prayers to mark the occasion. People belonging to the tiny Christian community in Karachi city celebrated the festival with zeal and fervor and prayed for peace in the country. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian death row prisoner Kulbushan Tadav's wife, mother, meet him in Islamabad. Islamic State claims blast at Afghan intelligence agency in Kabul. And Christians in India, Pakistan usher in Christmas festivities. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night and Merry Christmas.